The topic of my talk is neurocomputational basis of interpersonal alignment, but not synchrony of beliefs under uncertainty. That's long. So we'll just shorten it to interpersonal alignment of beliefs under uncertainty. And uh, to, know, to, to see what, what we mean by interpersonal un, un alignment of beliefs, I can give you a very simple, very, very nice example from, from a recent work. This, this, is, this, this headline is from Harvard Business Review in, in, in September, October issue, but it's actually a uh, sort of press release on, on, on an, an, an article by Cheng and colleagues from 2020. It, it basically gives you everything. It says, feeling unsure about yourself, to spend time with hubristic teammates. That basically is the concept of uh, interpersonal alignment. What, what, what that paper shows, uh, says is that overconfidence transfers from one person to another. And today, what I want to do is to actually study the, 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 the behavioral, but also the computational and, and neurobiological basis of that transfer of confidence. When, when, and then when I say a transfer, interpersonal alignment of beliefs, what we mean is that transfer of confidence. Okay, but, but how does this work? So in our research group in crowd cognition, the key question that we, we are interested in is how do we communicate uncertainty? And uh, that question is interesting and important for us because like any other communication channel, there is, there's two sides to this. One is the person who's communicating their uncertainty. How do we express our uncertainty? How, what, what kind of rules apply when, when, when we want to tell people how much we know about the thing that we are discussing? And there's also the recipient side, which is when we hear other people's opinion, and, and, and especially the, 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 their state of uncertainty when, 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 when they communicate it to us, how do we interpret that? And how do we integrate that with the information that we have about uncertainty of the world? So I'll give you two very, very brief examples of how, how we have studied this in the past. In one case, we had people do a visual search, a standard visual search that, that you would see in a lot of experiments in, in, in vision. But we had two people sitting in the same room, as you can see here, I hope. And uh, they were disconnected from each other in the first case. Each one of them was sitting in, in, in one room and, and they, they did not actually communicate with each other. They saw a, a set of visual stimuli and, and, and they, they, they did visual search. But what, what I'm plotting here is the, the, the correlation between the confidence of one person and the confidence of the other person. And one, one, this is the average confidence. Each data point corresponds to a pair of people that we tested. And you can see that for these people, when they're not connected, when they are not interacting with each other, their average confidences do not really relate to each other. They are like, like there's knowing one person's confidence doesn't tell you anything about knowing the other person's conf confidence across the entire experiment. But the moment we put them into the same room and, and they, they start making joint decisions to, with each other and, and they, they start interacting with each other, suddenly something interesting happens. What we see is that their average confidences become very, very correlated with each other. Here again, each data point is the, the, the one pair and, and, and one on each of the axis gives you the, the, the average confidence of one person, person versus the other. And what you can see comparing these two is that when people communicate, their confidences become correlated with each other. Knowing one person's confidence can give us information about the state of confidence of the other person. We have also seen this, like, it, it's important to say that these are, we, we call them experiments in cooperation because people do these visual search tasks together and their, 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 their goal is to, to find the target together and, and to do better as a group. So what we see is that there is alignment of beliefs in cooperation. But we also see a similar alignment of beliefs in competition. Here I'm showing you data from another type of experiment by Uri Hertz, who uh, tested groups of three people in what, what we call the advisor game. 
In the advising game, we have a client who is the red one here and two uh, competing advisors. Their job is to attract the attention of the red guy by, by, by offering him information about, about the state of the uncertainty of the world because the client, the red guy wants to invest in, in, in upcoming future events and earn money from, from those uncertain events. What we see is that here too, across people, what, what we see is that they, they, the people who are competing with each other, also their confidence levels correlate with each other. Knowing one person's confidence, again, is very informative about understanding the average state of the confidence of the other person. And this shows you that alignment of beliefs also happens in the states of competition because these two people are, are trying to compete with each other for the attention of, of the red guy. Now, okay, we have an idea what we mean by, by, by alignment of beliefs, but, but what, what does this, what are our real research questions? What are, why, why are we interested in this? The, uh, I can I mean, for, for, for today I have put forward two main questions for, 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 for us to answer. One is is alignment of beliefs a form of normative or informational conformity? And we will get to, to, to the definition of each. And the second one is how does social context impact decision making such that it gives rise to alignment? And uh, we want to know the answer to that at the level of computations in the decision process. And we want to see what we can understand about that about at, at the brain level. In order to answer these questions, uh, what I will present an experiment that we have been doing together with my colleagues from Iran. Uh, Jimmy Ismaili has been the one that uh, driving this research forward. And, and most of the, the stuff that you see from here onward is his master's project data. So in the experiments that he, he devised, what we had was that we have uh, subjects coming into our lab laboratory, sent into different rooms, and uh, we pretend that they're going to be working together and, and making joint decisions. So, so what you see here is that this subject that we show here in black is making decisions in, in, in the perceptual experiment that I will describe in a second, but also believes that in the other room, there is a partner sitting who he has just met. And that partner is also making decisions and, and their decisions are compared with each other and joint decisions are made. But in fact, what is happening is that the, 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 this subject is paired with a computer algorithm that generates probabilistic decisies on the fly according to, to, to a uh, an algorithm that, that, that I will describe. But what happens in the, in the experiment? In the experiment, what we have is that this, the, 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 after the fixation point at the beginning of the trial, we have a random dot kinematogram appearing for 500 milliseconds. The subject's task is to identify the direction of the, 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 the coherence, coherent motion of these dots going one way or another. And then after having decided whether they're going left or the right part, express their confidence on a scale of one to six by choosing one of these six levels of confidence by clicking on it with a mouse. Then at, at the end of this stage, the two decisions, decision from the subject and decision from the partner are, are displayed on the, on, the, on the scene. And as you can see, the, the person who has expressed higher confidence gets to, to make the joint decision. And then we see the, the, the outcome of the joint decision, which in this case was that our subject, the black was correct. The joint decision was also correct, but, but the blue subject's decision was wrong. So now this happens over, over a few hundred trials. And every time these two subjects are, are making the joint decisions together. But what, what happens is that in half of the blocks, without the subject, without our subject knowing, in half of the blocks, the algorithm generating these confidence and decisions works by, by producing systematically low confidence decisions. And in the other half of the trials, the, the algorithm generates systematically high confidence. And these are blocked in, in blocks of 24 trials. So, so, so there's, there's times when, when the subject is, is cooperating with, 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 with a partner that is systematically confident. 
And there are times when the subject is cooperating with the subject that is systematically underconfident. Now, the key point here is that the, 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 the algorithmic partner's accuracy stays constant and does not change. It's only the level of the, the, the confidence that goes up and down. And what also Jimmy has done is that by, 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 by doing a lot of clever control experiments with the, and, and training, well, he has in every subject that comes into this experiment, we have a very clear idea of their, their level of perceptual ability. And the perceptual ability of the algorithm is very closely matched to that of the part of the, the subjects. And, 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 and the, 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 the variation is, is controlled with, 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 with this very closely across the experiment. Okay. So what do we see here? The first thing that I show you here is that actually subjects do we replicate the earlier finding that I showed you about confidence matching. Here on the, on the y-axis of this plot, I'm plotting the, the average confidence of a given subject across the trials when they are interacting with a low confidence or a high confidence subject uh, algorithm. And on the y-axis, I'm showing you the, the, the average confidence of, of the algorithm. When, when the subject was interacting with them. And you can see that, that, that the, a, a similar confidence matching very close to what we saw in the previous experiments also happens here. Now, going from there, what we can say is that there can be two, and just, just one second, let me close this. Okay. So, we can, we, we, we can come up with at least two different uh, hypotheses for, for, for why confidence matching happens. And, and we take them from, from the standard social psychology textbooks and follow from, from, from the, the, the works of Solomon Ash and, and, and others in conformity. It could be that people are normat showing normative conformity. In other words, changes of confidence reflect a normative conformity and subjects just express confidence as conf consistent with, with, with their partner simply as a social obligation. Every time their partner goes up, they, they, they go up as well. Every time the partner goes down, they go down as well. But the variability in their behavior has nothing to do with their belief. On the other hand, it could be that the variability in the behavior actually shows a change in variability in the belief. And we want to know how and, and whether we can, we can actually did it distinguish between these things. In order to do that, what Jimmy did was that Jimmy looked at the pupil response in the intertrial interval, comparing the, 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 the trials from, from when, when, when the subject was cooperating with a high confidence algorithm compared to when the subject was cooperating with a low confidence algorithm. Low confidence here is shown by, 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 by the orange curve and high confidence is shown by, by the blue and you can see the average across the inter-trial interval. So, so, so it is important that these, these pupil sizes are not induced by the stimulus strength. They're, they're, they're taken from, from the inter-trial interval. And what you can see is that the pupil size is with very, very closely reflecting the, the state of the confidence of the partner. And what we know from a lot of recent literature about the relationship between pupil size and our state of uncertainty can tell us that this is perhaps circumstantial, somebody might say, but I think that the most direct way of having a circumstantial evidence that we are looking at informational conformity, that, that people's state, the belief state about, about uncertainty actually changes as a consequence of working with, with a partner that is expressing high or low confidence. Social context actually changes people's state of uncertainty. Okay, so informational conformity. We have evidence that informational conformity is at work. Now, the second question, how does social context impact decision-making and give rise to alignment at the level of computation and at the level of brain? In order to answer that question, I draw your attention to the behavioral uh, metrics, the, the, the key behavioral metrics of, of the perceptual decision that, that, that VVV examined. Here we have three panels. On the, on the left, we have accuracy. In the middle, we have confidence. And on the right, we have reaction time. 
And the colors are again orange for low confidence algorithm and, and blue for, for, for the high confidence algorithm. And what you see is that the, the subject's performance, our participants' performance in accuracy is identical in the two conditions. But they, are, they express much higher confidences when they are interacting with, with, with the, the, the high confidence agent. And interestingly, very importantly, they, 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 they show uh, faster reaction times when, when they interact and, and, and work with, with the, the high confidence agent. So this pattern of results can, can give us a lot of good, good starting points in order to understand the underlying decision mechanism that generates this, this, this behavior. In order to do that, what we did was we looked at a neural model of decision making, reaction time and confidence that has been very extensively used for, 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 for studying the random dot kinematogram tasks. Here in this play, what, what, what we see is that this is, this is a, 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 an example of the very famous uh, family of models that they call the sequential sampling model. In sequential sampling models, we, all, we, we, we have two abstract accumulators of evidence. Each accumulator ev no, 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 put, puts together evidence favoring one or the other alternative, in this case, leftward motion and rightward motion. And the moment one of the accumulators reaches a bound, then, then th this decision is made at that point. But, but the model that we are, we are using here is, is a specific model in sequential sampling called a neural attractor model. These attractor models um, work by, by, by simulating groups of neurons that, are, um, that, that prefer one direction versus the other. As you can see here, I've marked them by one and two for left and right. And within each population, there is positive feedback between the members of the population, and there is negative feedback across the members of the population. And when, when, when we, um, th th there's lots of work starting from, from the works of Wang and colleagues that, that shows that this kind of neural dynamics can, can produce this pattern of sequential sampling decision making very well. So, so we, 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 we fitted this model to, to, to our subject's behavior in the, when, when they were doing the task alone. And then we wanted to see what aspect of the model should we change in order to, to, to see this pattern of behavior when they're doing the same thing socially. Now, one hypothesis that we, we, we tried and, and, and this is across, across several different models that, that we looked at was, was the most successful one, was that what if the, the partner's confidence acts as a top-down input for the model in, in, in our subject's head? So in other words, here we have some one subject expressing confidence and that confidence is fed into the, 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 the neural attractor model that, that, that the hypothesize works in, in our participants. Head. How would that work? So here I show you the, the, a simulation that says, that compares two conditions. One is when, when there is no top-down WX feedback, when WX is zero, and you can see that in the dotted lines. That is what happens for the dotted lines, one, one, and, and how, how one of them eventually crosses the boundary and, and, and decision is made. But if we have a top-down input that is added to both of the populations, what you see is that the winning population rises faster. And that rise faster, when we look at the, the, the behavior of the model, um, can, you know, leads to, to, to a pattern of predicted simulated behavior, very similar to what we see here in, in, in the social condition. So here I show you the, the, the uh, simulated model's performance for, 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 for its accuracy, for confidence, and for reaction time. The most in, important thing that, that we, should, we should notice from this very rather, rather, rather crowded the slide is that the, the, the colors here do not, do, are, should have a, have a completely vertical organization. In other words, the amount of WX doesn't change the, 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 the accuracy when we have, for example, high or low WX input from, 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 from the system. And that is, that is uh, intuitively very understandable. If we add equal amounts of top-down input to both populations, we are not going to make one or the other any better. The other one 
is for confidence and for reaction time. And here we can see that the color suddenly take an oblique shape. And, and that oblique shape can be translated in exactly the same way as, as, as we have here, that, that confidences go high when Wx is higher and reaction times become faster when, when Wx is in, and then is, 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 it becomes bigger and bigger. So that gives a, gave us the idea that what if what interacting agents in our experiment do is that they reciprocally uh, drive each other's decision-making module, one such that one subject's confidence acts as, as top-down input for the other one, and the, the other subject's confidence as, acts as top-down input for the first one. And the good thing is that we can very immediately connect these two examples of the model and, and, and run the simulation and see if we can actually see confidence matching. And what we see there is that when we have models, these, these neural attraction models that, 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 that are working one way or that, that, that are working without being connected to each other, the high confidence and the low confidence agent do not really become uh, aligned with each other. But the moment we gave one, one, one model's confidence to the other one and, and vice versa feedback in, 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 in a mutually connected form of model, then, then the, the, the model simulations show us a very similar level of confidence matching. The two agents' confidences become very similar to each other across time. Now, the, the, um, there is a couple of interesting follow-ups from, from, from this model. This model, when, when, when we look at this model, we can then look at whether this model makes any predictions that we can go back to the data and test. One of the predictions that this model shows is that the model predicts that when, when, when we connect, when we co connect two uh, neural attractor accumulator models like this, as if these are the two subjects, then what we also get is that people's confidence when they are, should be, the variance of people's confidence should decrease with the amount of top-down input that they get. In other words, this, this predicts that people's, the variance of, of, of one's confidence should also co-vary or, or, or depend on whether the subjects are working with, with a high confidence agent or a low confidence agent. And that is indeed what, what you see here. The higher top number, what, what, we, what we see here is that mm, subjects' confidences co-varies with, with, with the fitted value of the top-down current that has been fitted to the, to, the, to the model that describes their behavior. And so, so this prediction, the important thing about this prediction is that we did not have this prediction or, or we did not design the experiment for this prediction. And then the, the, the prediction and, and the, 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 the experimental data came out of, of the simulation that, that uh, was, was, was used to, to, to explain the reaction time and confidence data. Now, finally, I'll show you just one other piece of evidence and then I will finish. And that would be the uh, the, 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 what, what, what we have for the alignment of beliefs at the level of brain. What, what we have on the, on the left side is that if we look at the model predictions for, for the accumulator behavior, what we also see is that across various coherency levels of the stimulus, the prediction is that the rate of evidence accumulation, the slope of that, that rise in the accumulated evidence, also depends on what the, what 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 our our partner is doing. When and and we the, the, the model predicts faster, higher rise in, in, in slope of evidence accumulation when the subject is is uh, cooperating with a high confidence algorithm compared to when they are cooperating with a low confidence algorithm. And here on the right, I'm showing you the. EEG signal for, for, uh, for a component that is called the CPP, central parietal positivity, which the works of Redmond O'Connell and others have shown it, um, correlates very strongly with the level of, of a stimulus strength going from very uh, low stimulus strength to high. And what we have here is the quantified the slope of the rise of, of, of these these these. EEG signals, and as predicted by, 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 the, by, by, by the neural attractor model, we also see here that when, when subjects are communicating with or, and collaborating with the high confidence algorithm, then they, 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 the EEG signal also shows a faster rise and, and, and a slope of rise. 
So that brings me to the end of the talk. I'll just give you a summary that communication of uncertainty does change our beliefs. I hope I have convinced you about that with the pupil data. Alignment of beliefs can be observed in behavior, pupil size, and in EEG signal. And the behavioral and neuronal observations are consistent with a sequential sampling model in which the signal, the social signal that we get from the other person acts as a top-down signal for coordinating or, 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 or aligning our beliefs with each other. And with that, I stop. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bahador, for that wonderful talk. Um, and uh, I, I do have, as ever, far too many questions. So I'll keep an eye on other questions coming in on our YouTube stream. But um, one of my questions is probably best if you could go back to the the graph where you see the effect of the interconnected model. So where you see the, the dotted lines and the, the solid lines. Um, um, few, uh, here. Yeah. Exactly. And my question relates to the difference between the dotted and the, the solid line, um, with the idea being that it's not clear at which point we take in uh, the effect of, of W, of the other person's certainty. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it too is a dynamic process and we have to decide maybe based on priors, do we believe this person? Is this somebody we actually care about is, and so on and so on before we take it in? Is that, is that, could that be correct? Or do you think the effect very well be correct, but, but for the, for, from, from the, the experiment, we cannot say that because you should remember that, that the experiment was done in a block design. So what we have is that block, there's blocks of, of high confidence and blocks of low confidence partner algorithm. And that means, and, and, and at the same time, uh, the cover story for the, for, for, for the participant is that they're interacting with the same person all along the time. So all of these limitations of this experiment, unfortunately, make the, 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 the experiment kind of like, like un, not, not exactly suitable for answering your question. Ideally, one would want to rerun this experiment, for example, with, uh, so, for example, so having, having you cooperate with an in-group or an out-group person, or having you cooperate with, 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 with a person that, that, that comes in and goes out, or, or, or they, 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 they're, they're, their confidence varies on a trial-by-trial -trial basis rather than on a block-by-block a block -block basis. So Do you see a block-to-block to block change, um, just in case yes, you yes. know you have this. What 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 you see here is actually the the the, the impact of the blocks, like because the the various um, dots that you see for 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 every participant, there's four dots. Mm -hmm. There's a black one, a a, a red one, red. a, a mm -hmm. and blue and the green, if I'm not mistaken, and the blue and the the green are are for when when the subject is interacting with 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 with, with a high confidence algorithm, and the, the black and the red are when when they are interacting with a low confidence algorithm. So for the same subject, their confidence more or less, you could say, matches and co-varies with the algorithm. Now, one could ask, is this a leader follower or, or, or a, an interactive relationship? And I would tell you that again, the design of the experiment does not allow to test that. You preempted my question. <laughs> I think you need to go run those experiments so you can answer me. Because uh, yes, I am hopefully. very curious, especially based on what we were talking about with Anita, with this idea that something has to to switch in you to decide to take on uh, this other information. Um, and we talked about the, in this morning session about similarity or reliability, which basically are just other ways of saying something needs to tell us to, to take this information on board. Yes. So I would be very curious. Go run those experiments, by the Go, go. Um, I'm going to just check if there are any questions. As soon as we can open the lab again, then, then I would happily do it. Online experiments. Um, so we do have a question. No, this is not um, the kind of thing you can do online. Don't this challenge me. Uh, we okay. have a question from Ralph uh, from the MPI in Berlin, who you probably know. Okay, go uh, ahead. Yeah. Who says, fascinating, which is always a good start. Uh, participants play with algorithms without knowing this. Would knowing you play against an algorithm lead to more decoupling of the neural nodes. Huh. Uh, hello, Ralph. The, 
the, the, the quick answer is that this work that we did in 2017, we actually compared and, 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 and examined whether, whether this actually happens. And uh, knowing if, if you are in, in like, like you know, whether, whether knowing that, that you are cooperating with, a, with an algorithm or with a person changes. And the confidence matching behavior at, at this level is replicated across the two different uh, forms of, of, of the, 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 the experiment. But uh, whether, for example, the, 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 the belief and the conformity in the belief also similarly changes or not, to be honest, uh, I, I would say that is an open question. It could be that, that you may cooperate with, for example, a machine learning visual, visual algorithm differently from when you cooperate with a human uh, partner. And, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that happens. <laughs>